electrical work environment consists of three interrelated components, installation, maintenance, and safe work practices. Safe work practices are most effective when the installation is code compliant and the equipment is maintained appropriately. The NFPA documents that address each our aspects are NFPA 70, National Electric Code, NFPA 70B, Recommended Practice for Electrical Equipment Maintenance, and NFPA 70E, Standard for Electrical Safety in the Workplace. A companion document for NFPA 70E is NFPA 70B. The purpose of this recommended practice is to reduce hazards to life and property that can result from failure or malfunction of industrial type electrical equipment systems and equipment. It provides guidance on maintenance practices and on setting up a preventative maintenance program. NFPA 70B applies to preventive maintenance for electrical, electronic, and communication systems and equipment and is not intended to duplicate or supersede instructions that manufacturers normally provide. Good housekeeping is an important characteristic of a safe work environment. Storage that blocks access or egress or prevents safe work practices must be avoided at all times. The area must not be used for storage, including the storage of movable items such as push carts or trash bins. Maintaining adequate access is essential for an employee to operate the equipment in a safe and efficient manner. The primary intent of providing egress from the area is so that, in the event of an emergency such as an arc flash incident, the employee can escape. Items including toolboxes, parts, shipping containers, or hand carts must not be placed in your path of egress. In order to protect employees from contact with energized electrical components, all covers and doors must be closed and latched using all fasteners provided with the equipment. All unused openings, other than those intended for the operation of equipment or those as part of the design, must be closed to afford protection substantially equivalent to the wall of the equipment. Some panel boards are equipped with a dead front cover and outer trim. The trim has a hinge door that provides access to the circuit breakers without exposing any live parts. Removing the trim exposes the gutter space. Although the breaker terminals are not visible with the trim removed, they are capable of being inadvertently touched and are considered exposed. Article 320 of the NFPA 70E identifies work practices associated with installation and maintenance of batteries containing many cells, such as those used with uninterruptible power supplies, telecommunication systems, and unit substation DC power systems. Working with batteries can expose an employee to both potential shock and arc flash hazards. A person's body might react to contact with DC voltage differently than from contact with AC voltage. Batteries can also expose an employee to hazards associated with chemical electrolyte used in the battery. Battery charging can sometimes generate flammable gases, so it's important for the employee to avoid anything that could cause open flame or sparks. The employee must consider exposure to these hazards when selecting work practices and PPE. Batteries are sources of energy. Therefore, isolating the source of voltage from a cell is not possible. Working on a battery system is always considered energized electrical work. Personnel shall not wear electrically conductive objects such as jewelry while working on a battery system. The following protective equipment shall be available to employees performing any type of service on a battery with liquid electrolyte. Goggles and face shield appropriate for the electrical hazards and the chemical hazard. Gloves and aprons appropriate for the chemical hazards. Portable or stationary eye wash facilities and equipment within the work area that are capable of drenching and flushing the eyes and body for the duration necessary to mitigate injury from the electrical light. These requirements only apply if electrolyte is being handled, which is possible only with batteries utilizing free flow liquid electrolyte. Activities in which electrolyte is being handled would include acid adjustment, removal of excess electrolyte, or cleanup of electrolyte leak or spill. Most battery maintenance activities do not involve handling of electrolyte. Electrical safety program principles include, but are not limited to, the following. Inspecting and evaluating the electrical equipment, maintaining the electrical equipment's insulation and enclosure integrity, planning every job and document first-time procedures, de-energizing if possible, anticipating unexpected events, identifying the electrical hazards and reduce the associated risk, protecting employees from shock, burn, blast, and other hazards due to the working environment, using the right tools for the job, assessing people's abilities, and auditing the principles.